So tell me about Secret Sins and what you want to say in the documentary about the secret sin that's in Psalm 90 verse 8. Yeah, I'll be happy to expound on that a little bit. I think when you speak to any of these false sinless perfectionist guys or these repent your sins crowd as they're called, they're quick to um, speak like a politician and say, well, you know, uh, we should turn from our sins and um, we should also believe God. Well, although both of those things are true and predominantly obviously believe on Christ by <laughs> for sal eternal salvation, what they're essentially saying is works. Now, the problem we've got inevitably is the thing what they tend to come out with first is that um, they're saying that they have no sin and they have turned from all their sins. Well, there's one problem with that. Nobody's ever turned from all their sins ever. And the only sinless person that we've ever known was Jesus himself. Now, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and all come short the glory of God. Now, I didn't stutter there and say all twice that clearly said, for all have sinned and all come short. So immediately when you hear a, a, a false prophet or possibly uh, somebody unlearned at best say, you need to repent of your sins, that, that might sound well and good. However, the likelihood is that person's not saved themselves. And inevitably when we film these people or challenge these people, they will quickly roll out verses of Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Paul, by grace and faith alone etc. But at the same time, whilst like a, a politician who they believe the technical term is pivoting, will answer the question without answering the question, and they'll still convolute that with, well, well, if you really are saved, and then, then you know, you'll be a good, you'll do good works. So essentially in the trade, what we'll call lordship salvation. So there are lots of things wrong with this. Now, I just want to go, go touch on something, what I said there about um, something called secret sins. Now, I have my Bible in front of me, and just so I'm not making this up, and this is what this says verbatim, it says there in Psalm 90, verse, sorry, Psalm 90, verse 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Now, the context of this, uh, part of this, should I say, is that God is saying that, uh, you know, we have sins we're not even aware of, and faults we're not even aware of. So if you think of it in these people who egregiously spout this rubbish and nonsense, they're saying that they're above these secret sins, essentially. So inevitably, if they're going to be wrong about repenting your sins, guess what they're wrong about all of these other things, like the head-covering crowd or the false Hebrew roots, fools, and so on and so on. Um, so inevitably, we still have to try and be amenable and have patience with some people, but inevitably, a lot of these people are going to be marked and avoided, unfortunately. Or fortunately, should we say. Now, I just want to go back to one other thing as well while we're here recording this. Now, for a lot of people who are unlearned or new to Christianity or whatever, I'm sure they've heard these morons scream the word repent in the street. And quite simply, repente in Spanish just means to turn from one thing to another. Or the Greek word metanoia means to turn from one thing to another. Or essentially have a change of mind would be a derivative of that. Now, the reason why I mention this word repent, like I say, is because you'll hear this handed about quite a lot in Christianity. Now, I think we would all agree, no matter what your level of learning is, that we would all say that God is sinless. <laughs> Sorry for laughing at that, but this is what we deal with children, quite literally. Now, I want you to focus in on the camera here and have a look what this is in Genesis 6.6. 6. And tell me who the first person is who repented in the Bible. And it repented the Lord that he made man on earth. So are these are these unsaved fools now telling me that the our Lord needs to turn from sin? Is that what they're seriously telling me? And no wonder that God has, the Bible says in here, that God has a special place for the false prophet. Because it's one thing people rejected in the gospel, because all who quite simply reject the gospel are going to hell. Now, if you believed in that free gift, amen, and that's all the Lord's after. If then you then get edified by being in, in a fortunate place where you can go to church, unfortunately in the eschatological timeline, we are in the end, so there are a few places to go. But the most important thing is, is that, you know, if you can get edified, great. However, um... What a lot of these people uh, 
fail to realise is is that there are people out there like myself and lots of other people who do know what the Bible says and you know pride cometh before the fall like there's lots and lots I've read this multiple times I've listened to this multiple times just like my other colleagues and you know what the first thing we need to know is that like we can never this Bible is inexhaustive we need to keep learning but there are some very basic fundamentals of the faith that we do not need works Ephesians 2 8 9 4 by grace through faith alone and not of works I'm not sure how people get confused about that, but these people do. There are many things I could touch on. You know, I people don't tend to think of the people, for anybody who doesn't know, Calvinism is a major problem. Yes, John Calvin was a murderer. We have that on record. Uh, I can't remember if it's Michael Savitas or Stephen Savitas. I haven't done a deep dive on this for a while. But basically, a preacher came to correct him in public, and he had that man put in the stocks and killed and burnt alive. You know, great grandmama, Catholicism has a roots in a lot of things. Essentially, yet again, shocker, repenting your sins. People, you need to look at this. And through the great preaching and edification on this channel, I'm sure you're going to do that. You have a good day and we'll speak again.